Welcome back to the 52 Week Garden. I'm Paul and glad you're here with us. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about pineapples. Uh, a lot of people uh, try to grow pineapples from the pineapple tops of the, uh, of the fruit that you buy at the grocery store. Uh, that will work and it will produce pineapples and I'm here to, to prove it to you. Here are a couple of pineapple plants in this pot here. It's about a, uh, about a, a 10 gallon pot right here. Well, actually that's about a five gallon pot. And you see there's one pineapple there. There's another baby coming up out of the center of this one in the back. Harder to see. There's another one that's just getting started right there. You can see it if I get myself out of the, get my shadow out of the thing. There's one there. And then we'll go over here. There's another nice one right there getting started. And we'll go over here. Take a look at this fat one right here. I'm sure these other two plants in that pot will produce before the end of the summer. These have not produced yet. One of them we just transplanted from a smaller pot, so they'll probably produce later this summer. This one over here has one that's just starting to size up. It's a little bitty bitty, about as big as a large pine cone right now, but getting bigger. And then these uh, small, these plants here will produce before the end of the year. So uh, pineapples will and do produce. Uh, you simply cut the top off of a pineapple fruit. And some people will sit them in a shallow tray of water to get them started. But we've had a whole lot of success. Literally, uh, you cut the pineapple top off just barely, just right there. You don't need much meat at all. And then you plant that. We plant ours directly into some really good compost in a pot and keep it moist. And they take right off and root and grow. Now, the growth habit on these is they will grow, mature, flower, and produce a, uh, a pineapple. Kind of like a bromeliade is really what they're like, if you're familiar with bromeliades. And another uh, thing they have in common with bromeliade, when this first comes out, it'll have a lot of uh, pink or purplish color to it. And then as it sizes up and the fruit starts to develop underneath, it turns almost all green. But another thing they have in common with a lot of bromeliades, serrated teeth. That bad boy will eat you alive. They're recurved teeth. They're curved forward like this. And it's like a jigsaw blade. You run your arm down that, it'll cut you wide open. These things will eat you alive. Uh, now, they are tropical, and I, by that I mean they're 100% tropical. You cannot let them get below uh, 40 degrees. They will start dying back. You let them get down to the 30s, they will absolutely die, no questions asked. How do we keep ours alive? Our simple greenhouse back here. And we just pulled these out this weekend. They've been growing in the greenhouse all winter long. The funny thing is, when we went to move them in that greenhouse, we gave them all haircuts. We took our clippers, and you can see a lot of the uh, branches here that we cut back last fall. See them all, all, the, all of the cut back branches? That's so that we could get close to the pot to move them without getting ourselves torn up. But look at all of this new growth that grew over the winter. Now, I don't keep my greenhouse 60 or 70 or 80 degrees inside. It gets that hot during the day. At night, it drifts down into the mid 40s. And we've got a lot of heat sink material in the greenhouse that absorbs uh, solar heat during the day and then slowly radiates it at night to keep these things above that 40 degree mark. So uh, they've actually started, this, this pineapple started in the winter and actually started sizing up and some of these other ones too. So they will thrive. We're in Southeast coastal Georgia. Uh, we do have freezing temperatures. We do have, uh, you know, a, a dozen or so nights where it gets down below 32, uh, but the greenhouse keeps them alive and we put them out in the spring. They love the hot, humid weather here, um, and they grow. Now, another thing you need to know is when the parent plant finishes producing a pineapple and you cut the pineapple off once it's full size, when this parent plant is finished and we cut that pineapple off, this plant will start to die back and new baby plants will come out at the base, around the perimeter of the base. Um, once you've cut this pineapple back and you see the baby sprout around the base, you go in and cut the mother plant off at the base. You don't want any energy being wasted in that mother plant. You want it to all go into the babies that replace it. Um, the mother plant will produce one pineapple and then it will slowly die. 
the babies will replace it and produce one pineapple each. That's the culture on these. Um, as far as feeding them, you could feed them a citrus fertilizer if you want to, if you've got a specialized citrus fertilizer. I tend to just throw a little uh, fish and seaweed emulsion on them a couple times a year during the summer, spring and midsummer. And then I give them a little 10-10-10 or malorganite in the spring. And then again, some 10-10-10 and malorganite around uh, August. So I feed them uh, uh, mid-spring, early spring, to, and again in uh, midsummer. Uh, at the height of summer and uh, that, t t that keeps them growing good growing lush. One thing also on your pineapples is they like moist soil. They don't want to be wet. They don't want wet feet but they don't like drying out at all. If you let them dry out for two or three days between waterings they'll start looking puny. They won't produce fruit or they'll produce stunted fruit. So if you want to get fruit and you want to get full-size fruit you need to keep them watered regularly so that the soil stays damp and moist. Um, not waterlogged, not sopping wet, but just moist. Um, I like to have a, uh, 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 either a clear or, or some kind of tray underneath the planter that holds a little extra water, some type of water reservoir. I water them from the top. Uh, to dampen the soil and then fill the tray up from the bottom so that they can wick it up as they want it and that tends to work really well for them but again uh, damp moist soil do not let it dry out between waterings either use a drip irrigation or some kind of automatic watering system if you can't stay on top of it or like I said put some kind of uh, tray or water reservoir underneath water them from the top to dampen the soil every couple of days and then keep the reservoir underneath full so that it can wick it up as it needs it uh, um, other than that, they're pretty low maintenance. There are no bugs, no diseases, no anything that really bothers them. Uh, I don't have to spray them with anything. Uh, just pretty much keep them watered, feed them in the spring, feed them in midsummer, and uh, keep them uh, above 40 degrees in the winter. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. And you get pineapples without having to go to the grocery store and pay an arm and a leg for them. They're free. So go buy you a couple pineapples when they're on sale, cut the tops off and get growing some pineapples. That's our 52-week uh, garden tip for today about pineapples. I hope this information helps you to get out there and get growing. We'll see you on the next video.